For this video, I'd like to talk about writing linear equation word problems. So with these types of word problems, you're going to have to come up with the equation yourself. And the truth of it is that these types of problems are incredibly difficult. In fact, out of the majority of my students, almost all of them struggle on these problems. These are some of the, the most difficult ones in Algebra 1. And it's just difficult to be able to pull an equation from a bunch of words. It's much easier to work the other way, where you have an equation and you can just analyze it. So this one, we have to build the equation. So I'm going to go through several different problems because you really just need to see a huge variety of these to start to get familiarity with them. So before I jump into this, we're basically coming up with a linear equation. And what we're going to use is our slope intercept form. So remember, that's just y equals mx plus b, where m, the number attached to x, or your independent variable, is just the slope. And then b, this number we add or subtract at the end, that's going to be our y-intercept. Since remember, if you just plug in x equals 0, effectively the point at which it crosses the y-axis, this term just goes away and you just get b. So with this in mind, when we solve these problems, we're going to be looking for a few different things. You might find, and actually let me change colors, you might find a point on the line. You might find an intercept on the line, either y or x, but usually it's the y-intercept. And you might also be given the slope. Now from all of this information, we should be able to find some of these or all of them in the end. But most of these problems will just give you one or two of these and you have to build the equation from that. So let's jump into the problem and I apologize, I might mispronounce this, but let's go with Shreya read a book cover to cover in a single session at a constant rate. So I'm underlining this because that's the hallmark of a linear equation, that the rate, or in this case the slope, is constant, it doesn't change. In fact, if the rate did change, it would be a curvier looking graph rather than just a straight line. So after reading for 1.5 hours, she had 402 out of the total 480 pages left to read. And we're going to let y represent the number of pages left to read after x hours. So my first advice, kind of the strategy for these, is to define your variables. So we know that in this case y is just going to be the number of pages left. And we also know x, since that's our time and hours. So I'll just write x as time, and we're looking at it in units of hours. And once you've defined your variables, now you want to go and look for these key pieces of information. So let's think about what they did give us. And at this point, you're kind of looking for the numbers here. So after reading for 1.5 hours, she had 402 out of the total of 480 pages left to read. So it looks like if you do the subtraction that she read 78 pages in one and a half hours. So let me start writing this down because we're going to organize all of our information. We know that in 1.5 hours, so that's our x, that y, the number of pages left to read, would be down to 402. And we also know that since there was a total of 480 pages to read, and she's trying to read it in a single session, we know that when the time was 0 hours, she had 480 pages left to read. So let's say when x was 0, so 0 hours before she started reading, that she had 480 pages left to read. And this piece of information right here is pretty useful for us, since this is our y-intercept. Remember, you get the y-intercept when you plug in x equals 0. So we have a useful point. In fact, we now know what b is. Since b is just our y-intercept, or it's the y-value of our y-intercept, since the x-value is 0. So b, we just figured out, was 480. So at this point, we just need to figure out the slope. Because ultimately with these problems, you just need to figure out what m and b are. If you know those, you can just plug them in to this slope-intercept form. So to find the slope, we can use the slope formula. So 
let me write that down and change colors. So m is the difference in the y values, y2 minus y1, divided by the difference in the x values, x2 minus x1. So we're going to use these two different points, and I will call this x1, y1, and we'll call this x2, y2. So we got 402 for y2, so that'll go up top, and we will be subtracting y1, which was 480, and on the bottom, x2, well, that was at our one and a half hours, and x1 is just the zero hours, so minus zero here. So you get minus 78 divided by 1.5, which we'll have to put into the calculator. And what you get is minus 52. And again, this is our slope. So we just found m there. So we can write our equation by just plugging in m and b. So let me just do that right here. y would be m, which is minus 52 times x, plus b, which is 480. And so this is what we think the equation is, and we're going to have to test it now based off the information that we were given, just to make sure it makes sense from what we were given. And you might be wondering, why do you have a negative slope here? Well, it's because we start at 480, and the amount of pages left to read is going to decrease. Because remember, y is how much there is left to read. Now, if we define y to be the number of pages that have already been read, then our slope would be positive. But since it's the number of pages left to read and it's subtracting over time, that's why our slope is negative. So what we found, y is minus 52x plus 480. And we know that if we put in 1.5 hours, so x is 1.5, if we put that in here, this would become minus 78. And minus 78 plus 480 would get us back to 402. So this equation does work with the information that we were given, so we can feel confident that this equation is correct. And we also know that when you plug in zero, when no time has passed, you have 480 pages left to read.